Uh, Rick is uh, with K&M Technologies, Mr. Rick Walker. He's a graduate of the University of Michigan, and he's forcing me to say go blue, so whatever that means. He uh, has an aerospace engineering degree, and he's got over 10 years of experience in the drilling industry with Transocean and with K&M Technology. Uh, so um, without further ado, uh, Rick's going to talk to us about the impact of hole quality on hole cleaning. So Rick, take it away. All right, thanks, Blaine. Uh, you know, like you said, uh, my name's Rick Walker. I spent my first 15 years working in the auto industry before I came to oil and gas. So I've been around the block. I drawn to cyclical industries for some reason. I work for uh, KM Technology Group. We're a consulting firm that does extended reach and contact complex well engineering. Uh, we will mitigate the risk through holistic well design. We'll work on the drill string, the path casing sizes, hole sizes, mud properties, the whole nine yards to make sure that the well ends up being completed successfully. Uh, we also offer technical training and we have our own software, uh, ERA, which has been, it's pretty much the best one out there for standard reach drilling. We've been around for over 30 years, but we were acquired by Schlumberger in 2008. We operate as an independent business unit though, so we don't have any obligation to push Schlumberger tools. We will recommend what's best for the job. We don't care who makes it, Halliburton, Schlumberger, Weatherford, whatever. Today I'm going to talk about uh, hole cleaning with enlarged well bores. This is a video by Fred Dupriest. What you see here is on this end is drilling ahead, and you can see the cuttings bed laid down throughout the well bore. You're not really going to see anything at the surface at this point. But you have this enlarged hole section. And you'll see this dune start to form at the front edge of this. You're starting to get cuttings through here now, but this dune is forming here. It will eventually spread, that height will spread throughout the entire section of this well bore, the enlarged section. Now, when it comes to hole cleaning in a high angle well, a lot of people, sorry, I'm trying trouble with the pointer here think that it looks like this, where it's a suspension flow, you start spinning the pipe and it all just keeps going right up. But in reality, it's a saltation flow. About 10% of the cuttings are suspended at any given time. The hole is gonna flow from the bottom up. So you're gonna get this big flow toward the end before it even starts going up the vertical part of the hole to through the riser or if you're deep water or just to connect the surface. Here's an example of what the saltation flow looks like. With a pipe down here spinning at 150 degrees, you can see how the cuttings kind of hop. Depending on the angle of the hole, they're gonna hop a little further in a lower angle hole and a lot less in a higher angle hole. But without that rotation, they just sit on the bottom. The rotation's what's gonna flick them up into the flow to keep them hopping along. Here's an animation of hole cleaning in a high angle hole. Ignore the fact that the pipe is spinning left. Um, that's an animation mistake, obviously. But you can see that this is basically, it's gonna move as a dune, leaving a little cuttings bed at the bottom and move as a, you know, as a dune all the way through to the end. But there is a residual cuttings bed that's always gonna be there unless you back in the hole. Now, in large well bores, there's a, there's a few different ways that that'll happen. You can intentionally end up with an enlarged well bore due to under reaming. At that point, at least you know that it's there and you can manage it through proper planning, but you still need to make sure it's cleaned thoroughly prior to running casing, because as you saw before, that's going to fill up more than the gauge well bore will be. The other cause is well bore instability. In a high angle well, that's going to be a lot more difficult to diagnose than it is in a vertical well. 
you're typically not going to pack off while you're drilling because you're going to move that dune beyond the BHA prior to making your engines. So you won't have an, uh, any issues with that. It's tough to see it with MWD tools, ECD readings. You're not going to have the cuttings in the flow, so you're not going to see an increase in ECD really. And a lot of times you don't have caliper tools down there, so it's not going to be readily recognizable that way. Usually you'll see it when you start tripping out, and at that point, it could be too late. You're already going to start seeing problems. This is what it looks like when you're cleaning the cuttings bed in a large well bore. You can see the, the cuttings bed flowing in the gauge well bore and in the enlarged well bore. But the gauge is getting clean while the enlarged well bore still has a significant amount of cuttings in it compared to the gauge well bore. You can see that it's pretty much stopped flowing in there and it's down to the residual bed but the enlarged portion still has a significant amount of cuttings in it. This is what it looks like when you're tripping out through the well bore. When you're going through the enlarged portion, it's usually not an issue because despite the amount of cuttings in it, it's got plenty of room. It's when you get to the gauge portion and your BHA or your stabilizer has been dragging those cuttings along that you end up with the problem and it starts to jam the hole, you could possibly pack off or you're definitely gonna see some overpull. And like we were discussing further with under reaming, when you go to run casing afterwards, this is typically, you'll be under reaming the hole, you know it's there, but it's still an enlarged portion of the well bore. People have a tendency not to realize what the cleanup cycle looks like after that. You could pull through it because of the size. You would run a cleanup cycle there, typically started to get over pull. But as you got, come back down with the casing, you end up packing off due to the fact that you have all those cuttings down there and nowhere for them to go. This is what it looks like packing off in the well bore, if you do pack off. There's a few things that could happen as you go through. When you're pulling it into the cuttings of the dune and it packs off, whether it's coming out of a large well bore or just in the well bore itself, tendency is for people to turn on the pumps and try to wash it away. That may happen, but not on a regular basis from our experience. What typically will happen or what could happen is you'll end up washing the dirt further down there and creating a larger pack off. At that point, you either end up with lost circulation, which is the first thing that could happen, or you end up with a hydraulic hammer effect, which is gonna send that circulation all the way back down the well bore, cracking it basically all the way to TD. Sometimes we get questions on why we get that we end up with cavings above the BHA in a pack off situation. This is a YouTube video we found that that actually does a pretty good job of describing what's going on. So I'm going to play this for a second here. You won't be surprised to learn that fluid flowing in a pipe downstream of a valve also has momentum and that fluid also has a hard time stopping without a big fluctuation in pressure. But unlike upstream, where the momentum is carrying the fluid toward the valve, on the downstream side, the fluid is trying to flow away from it. So the spike in pressure is negative. And the vacuum. You may have noticed something different about this pressure gauge. It only measures pressures that are below atmospheric. It's a vacuum gauge. Watch what happens when I slam this valve shut. We get a very strong vacuum in the pipe downstream of the valve. The momentum of the fluid in the water hose is pulling away from the valve. That fluid tension sharply lowers the pressure in the pipe. This trap bubble gives a pretty good indication of what's happening as well. This is pretty far from a laboratory setting, no offense to the backyard scientists, 
but I'm seeing a peak of more than 30 inches of mercury or 100 kilopascals below atmospheric pressure. That's a lot of vacuum. In fact, so what you can see, basically what that is explaining is, is when you are packing off, not only do you have the issue below the BHA, but above the BHA, you've got the fluid that was still trying to go forward, but now has nothing to draw on. But while you're not pulling a vacuum in the hole to say you are going to drop your effective mud weight and possibly cause collapse and cave in above the BHA as well. The cuttings at different angles in the hole, I'm not sure if everybody's aware of this, is uh, you probably are high angle. They're going to move very slowly. They're not going to jump very far. In medium angle wells, they're going to move a little bit faster, but there is a risk of avalanching. And in a low angle or a vertical well, the cuttings are suspended and you're going to clean the hole relatively quickly and easily. So the question then becomes is, is an enlarged hole in a vertical, a large well bore in a vertical hole really an issue? And as you can see in this video, what happens is due to the fact that now your cutting slip velocity is now greater than your fluid velocity due to the enlarged hole your velocity drops now your cuttings aren't getting through so you end up with these pressure spikes as they kind of pop through into the gauge hole as you go along there and what happens then also is when you shut down the pumps to make a connection as you can see at the bottom of the enlarged hole where it goes back to the gauge hole you now have a, a potential pack off situation as all that dirt has settled there, all those cuttings. And that is pretty much what we've got today on the hole cleaning and enlarged hole. Are there any questions? Yeah, Rick, there was one from Calvin about he was just trying to clarify, are you saying that you could um, swab the well in? Um, Sorry, yeah. Right above where the pack off is. Yeah, uh, the, the problem with swabbing in a high angle well is you, if, if you pull too fast, you will pull, you, you end up dropping your mud weight. And the problem with the swabbing in a high angle well is you don't see it until you try to run back in. Unfortunately, a lot of times that's with casing because you're, you're pulling out and if you pull out too fast and you, people don't realize you will swab that well bore all the way to TD no matter at what point you're at. You're pulling that column. Obviously the swab load at TD will get less the further away you get, but as you swab it and reduce that, you're gonna to start to collapse the well bore and you don't realize it until you go back in because you've got no no, no way to measure that at all. So you've got to be careful with your speed in a high angle well, especially when it comes to swab coming out of the hole. That's where modeling comes in and, and does a really excellent job of predicting that. Uh, Rick, we have another question. We have another question from Louie. He's asking what effect uh, does spiraling have on cleaning efficiency? As far as spiraling and cleaning efficiency, I, I don't know of any major effect provided that it's not, it depends on how large the hole is with the spiraling. It, it, if it becomes too big, you know, obviously if you're over gauge, it's gonna affect your cleaning efficiency, but the spiral itself, it, I, don't, I don't see it really changing it a whole lot compared to being a, a pretty straight hole. Well, I, I will speak to that from my own history back with Sperry that we definitely saw a much more efficient hole cleaning operation in the gun barrel wells that we drilled. We, we drastically reduced the amount of time we had to spend circulating. And, and Chris is nodding his head as well with the Typhoon Reamer that uh, we, we believe that the spire, and one of the issues we have is that the models today do not uh, accurately represent a spiral borehole and I didn't see any spiraling in any of the videos. I, I'm sorry to point this out, but your videos all show perfectly gun barrel holes. Yeah. So, and a lot the of the plexiglass comes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the way plexiglass comes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, we, we can show you what you can do in plexiglass with a, 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 a spiraling uh, assembly. We actually did that back in the day as a marketing thing, but we took a three inch piece of uh, round plexiglass tube uh, or cylinder and had one of our guys put a, a, a high side force loaded drill bit with very, very short gauge. And he managed to drill a spiral hole in that piece of, uh, of plexiglass. So um, Calvin is also asking k and are the leaders in hole cleaning monitoring. Yes. Fair enough. Um, any other questions? Anyone here? Let's see what the chat says. Uh, yeah, a quick question for you in regards to vacuuming out of the hole. Your name. Matt, regard with Marathon Oak. Question in uh, regards to search swab and your modeling at KM on vacuuming out of the hole versus stripping out of the hole on tight margin. Uh, NPD wells. Is it better to vacuum if you have a very narrow margin? Uh, as far as a narrow margin for running a casing, yes, definitely. It, it, or a narrow margin for your well or your uh, mud weight. No, this would be for like a tight NPD situation where you have a full kit. Okay, yeah. Uh, More than likely, yes. Uh, you can trip on elevators, but you'll need to use the MPD at connections. It, you, you're going to need to go slow on elevators, but back reaming would give you a more controlled method of doing it without a, without a doubt. 